Hi there, hello, Sindri here, associate professor, and my job is to, among other things, to grade master theses. Exciting. I see a lot of weird things. In the previous video, I talked about how many weird things I see in regards to students trying to type in equations in Word. Uh, but there are plenty of weird things that can happen in a Word document. So what I want to talk about in this video is um, how to deal with uh, figures. Because if you're doing empirical research, empirical thesis, then yeah, you're probably going to have some one or more figures. And sometimes you want to put them side by side. But the problem is the figures are like, you know, moving all over the place. So how, how what can you do about that? Well, that's, that's what I want to talk about. So just uh, jump over here to the Word document with me and we can take a look at how I am doing it. Of course, I'm not the paragon of uh, truth and uh, what's aesthetically pleasing and what's most convenient, what's best in life. But I think I have a pretty decent way to do it. But you know, if you have a better way, then you have a better way. So here we are in an empty Word document and I want to have uh, two figures, two diagrams, two graphs. And it doesn't really matter what they are, and uh, but I think they are related to each other. So I don't want to have two separate figures. I want to have uh, one figure with like uh, two uh, sub figures. And I want to have like a caption, a title. And I want to have this uh, sub caption, like this is sub figure A, this is sub figure B. And also in academic writing, you always want to have some kind of figure description because every single figure needs to be understandable uh, independently from the running text. So the big issue here is how do you get the figures to be side by side and uh, how do you manage to get the caption and the description and the subfigures not to run away from each other. Right? You want to keep it in one space. So it's very obvious once you know about it, but the trick you can do here is to just make a table. Uh, so I'm going to have two subfigures. So I'm going to have uh, one row for the title, one row for the uh, subtitles, then I've got the actual figures, and then I'm going to have a description on the bottom. So that's going to be uh, four rows and uh, two columns, like that. So we need to fix this table a little bit. Uh, this table here is just to help us out initially. Uh, at the end of it, we're going to turn it invisible. So I'm going to start here by merging the uh, top two columns in row one. And then I'm going to merge it on the bottom here. Uh, now the specific way I'm doing it here, uh, you need to check out the uh, reference and style guide uh, for whatever university uh, you belong to, because usually there are different types of styles. Uh, so usually there's like a preference here. Uh, I like to have the, uh, the title of the figure uh, on top and then the figure. Uh, but in some uh, guides they say it should be the opposite. You, know, you have the figure on top and then you have the caption on the bottom. You know, potato, potato, just, you can just adjust this uh, in accordance with what your university wants you to do. Uh, but I think like the most important thing here is always stay consistent. If you do it one particular way in one figure, then do it the same way in the other figures. So on top here, I'm going to uh, write a uh, figure. I'm going to write, uh, this is figure one, colon. And as always, uh, my keyboard is in the wrong uh, language. It's in English, but I have a Norwegian keyboard, so you need to switch that. So colon, and then you know, the title of the figure, whatever that happens to be. And I like to align it in the middle here. So control E, E for echo, you can do that. Or of course, you can just uh, click, uh, click on this button. It was left aligned, no, it's in the middle. And I like to turn your know, figure and the number here. I like to turn that to bold. So that's control B. In English, in Norwegian, it would be Control F for Foxtrot, you don't fit. Uh, then on the bottom here, I want to have like a description of the uh, figure. So um, here is a description of the figure and the sub figures because you need to be able to understand this without having to read the rest of the section that this figure belongs to. And up here, I'm going to write, uh, this is going to be the subtitle uh, 1, whatever that is. And this is going to be for, uh, this is going to be called A. I'm going to put that in the middle as always and make it uh, bold. We can do the same over here. This is going to be a uh, subtitle number 2. And it is subfigure you know, B, so something like that. 
that's the way to do it. Oops. Uh, of course, as I said, some reference guys want to have like the figure on top and then like the captions below it. Uh, next, what you do here is to actually insert the figures. You can go to insert, and then you can go to pictures. Uh, I have it stored on my device there. So I already made these figures, this graph, it doesn't matter what it is. I made it with Stata. Uh, the only thing I want to comment here is that there are a lot of different types of format you could have. Uh, before, uh, EPS was like the, uh, you know, the, the one of the better uh, formats to use. Uh, then something happened and now uh, Microsoft no longer allows you to put that in into your Word document. Uh, so these days I'm using uh, TIFF. Um, I don't know too much about this, uh, like the different uh, types of uh, figures, but uh, uh, for me at least uh, TIFF works the best. But you can also put in like a PNG or whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna put in here uh, uh, graph number one and automatically it is uh, way too big. So I'm gonna have two of them side by side. If I only had one, I usually go for a width of 15.5 centimeters. Uh, but since I have two side by side, I'm gonna go for 7.4 centimeters. So right click here, uh, size and position. It's uh, automatically 16, which is uh, way too wide for the uh, A4 page. Not sure why they did it that way. So 7.4. Then you can put it aligned in the middle here. You see it's a little bit space here, so you can actually make it slightly bigger. But 7.4 is just what I usually go with. I'm not sure why I initially went for that, but that's what I did. Then I'm gonna insert the other one here. So from this device, uh, usually you kind of have to you know, navigate to the working directory where you have your figures, but I already done that. So graph number two. And I have to say the graphs I'm using here are terrible. They are not very aesthetically pleasing but I just had to make something here uh, on the spot. There we go. And you can also align that in the middle. Perfect. So now it's starting to look uh, quite good, I think, but uh, the, the, the table here is not very nice to look at. So one final thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to right click, table properties, uh, borders and shading, and then I'm gonna make it invisible. So there we go. Now we have a figure side by side and we have the titles the subtitles and the description and it's uh, not running away so yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's how i do it so maybe this will be useful for some of you yeah that's um mm, yeah yeah that's uh, that's it i uh, it, it wasn't that impressive it wasn't that insightful it was uh, it's kind of obvious but you know not everyone knows it, so someone has to someone has to point it out. So it might as well be me. See you around. <laughs>